Hey, how's it going? My name is Paul Kent, and I am going to do a, the first unboxing of the Loaded and Pantheon collaboration trip. Don't even know for sure if that's what we're calling it. So I'm pretty darn sure it's the first, considering that it is January, February, it's April 22nd, I think. And uh, so yeah, we've got months before this board is released. I'm embossing it today. I'm gonna spend three months not editing the video and then I'm gonna get it out and you're gonna see it. So, <clears throat> for those of you that don't know me or my history very well, I used to be more involved in the longboard scene. I started with downhill freestyle, then I did a bit of downhill, was really good at starts and started doing push races and started skateboarding to get to those races or to travel. In 2013, I retired, but I have been doing more on my own, some solo skate trips, and uh, I've been a little bit more involved with the hiking community. I was talking to Jeff Vine of Pantheon, and I've been really wanting to be involved with Loaded ever since they first spoke about the pushboard, like, I don't know when that was, like way back in 2009, at least was the first I heard about it. So anyway, this is Paul Kent, a little surprisey face, cause they, get, cause they thought I was missing. And look, it says Pascaboo Kid. It's a reference to the 2011 short film. You should check it out if you haven't already. I got my hiking backpack knife thingy. Here we go. First one of these in Canada. First one shipped to a person outside of either the Loaded or the Pantheon offices. Yeah. I love their paper folder. It's a pretty cool little thing. You can actually recycle this. Well, we got stuff. We got stuff. Oh, they're so nice. So they sent me a spare truck because I like to have my rear end. I like to have less steering in the rear. I run a D wedge or just a shallower angled base plate in the rear. So uh, this board's coming set up on Paris V3s. So I've got 50s, a set of 50s for free riding and to keep things even, but I'm not a big 50 fan of 50 degree trucks, to be honest. I've got 50, 50 for a split for going both ways and we got the shallower angle for the rear for when I want to go fast because I do like the board wanting to, I find having fine motor control in the front of the board, even when I'm standing on the rear of the board doing a Mongo thing, it's really helpful. Um, I ride eras most of the time in 47 and 38 in the rear. I also believe that a push board setup needs to be more stable than your downhill setup, unless you're planning on doing Teutonia or something like that. The new stickers are beautiful. Look at these. Will you look at these? Oh, they even set it up for me. For you. The box, it's pretty boxy. It's got some shipping labels. It says skateboard parts. Sneaky. I'm kidding. Look at this. This thing's cute. So we got a one, two, three, four, five, six. Six plies of Canadian maple, ah, ah, ah. And then on top of it, what looks like cork filled epoxy. 
So Loaded was experimenting with this again back when when I first went there, I think in 2010, they were experimenting with, with cork. So I imagine they had been doing it for a little while longer. It, 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 it dampens certain frequencies of vibration. Ooh, this thing is really cute. So we got big kaguamas on there. A nice radial drop, a 1.3 inch drop too. So this is lower than what I'm used to riding, a little bit shorter. The short stance will be better for most people, better for most types of riding. Um, it's gonna help in the corners a little bit. Uh, very, very short nose, very stout, but enough clearance for this setup for sure. The grip tape is gorgeous. We got the Pantheon logo in, in the center there, and we've got this little declaration of love. Aww. We got loaded in Pantheon and a little hardcore. On the bottom, this is super cool. Not only do we have the cork on the top, but we got this really neat carbon fiber. And it's a functional carbon fiber lam laminate by axle. So we're taking those one, two, three, six plies. It's really thin. It's so awesome. Adding a little bit of cork and a little bit of carbon fiber to give it the behavior and a little bit of protection. This graphic is it's so cute. First stand, Justin Socks. I'm gonna bring you along for the ride. Hi. Hey, buddy. Come on. Say something. So we got a mild concave. Not as much as what I typically run, but really good for pushing. Because it doesn't throw you off. If you wear if you wear shoes with big heels, you don't want the um, the rails jacking your shoes up more. It'll throw you off. We've got ample, ample wheel clearance. Get a finger in there. I could put, put larger wheels. So for me, it's a bit tight heel to toe, unless I run minimalist shoes, which most people will probably prefer. It'll be better for, for technical handling. Considering how low it is, it's pretty low. This board is maybe, maybe a bit low for aggressive, aggressive high-speed corners unless you're willing to drift it kind of like the Canadians used to back in the early 2000s. This will allow you to get a monster push in and run big wheels that store all kinds of energy. It's dark in here, too dark. The grip tape is honestly perfect for pushing. Oh, that's so cool. We got this pattern in the grip tape. Yeah! <laughs> Honestly, it looks great. So I'm really excited to give it a whirl. I'm, I'm very pleased that it's only six ply with everything else. Cause I like things thin and light. Uh, the radial drop feels great. So great job with that. That was Pantheon's engineering know-how. Loaded and Pantheon collab trip with graphic by Eddie Kim. Um, I'm super stoked, first impressions. This is a brilliant, brilliant board. I'm not just saying it, like this drop feels incredible. It, it totally grabs the foot. Yeah, this is great. This is good. All right, I'll report back with uh, miles under my feet. Future Paul here, different, uh, different space, different time. My cat is crawling out to join me. He's so cute. Say hi, buddy. Okay, bye. Hey, buddy. Okay, so I've been, ah, um... oh, geez, now Aaron's calling me. Before I got up and grabbed my phone, found my friend's number and called it.
Hello? Hello? You're telling a story about how you're phoning your friend? Yeah, you heard that whole thing? You're on a, you're on a video now. I'm uh, recording a video and you... So the That's really awkward, thanks. Yeah, the, uh, the mic's rolling, the camera's rolling. Are you like in the middle of recording yourself and I'm on the call? Yeah, now you are, yeah. That's fantastic. Say hi. Well, That's great. And then it was, it was a ginormous pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will for sure use it. This is Las Cuates? No. <laughs> this is not a totally different song. Okay, I'm going to send it to you, but I've got a huge project to finish today, so i got to go. Okay, I love you. I might have I news it. for you, but I'll tell you later, maybe later tonight or something. Oh, yeah, I got a free Pantheon. Is that what it is? Oh. No, I, I mean, I Very did. Good. Yeah, but I've got one. They're going to put... Bye, Aaron. Can't wait to hear the news. Okay. Bye, Paul. See ya. Hugs. And, and more. Okay. Where was I? <laughs> it was something like... Hey, I'm Paul Kent, back from... from the future. <laughs> I just got back from the... Uh, 2022 Miami Ultra Skate. I've been using this board for 10 months now. I did get some more time on the board. I also did a mini tour of Alberta where I was looking for dinosaurs. And I'm looking for dinosaurs. Using the new Loaded Pantheon trip. With my brand new Loaded Pantheon collaboration trip skateboard. By the time you see this video, this board will have launched. Uh, so this is the one that I was using for both of those trips. These are the same wheels. Actually, I might have changed the rear wheels. Had a lot of scrapes. Figured I'd finish this video off with my impressions of the board. So I am certain that my objectivity will be put into question due to the fact that I am associated with Loaded and now Pantheon, and Jeff from Pantheon is a very dear friend of mine. My best frenemy. But in my defense, I asked to be a part of this project and I came out of retirement for it. Because I believe in both brands, both companies, and the people behind those companies. And I also believe that the product is exceptional. I'm gonna give you my thoughts here. I'm not going to hold any punches. Okie doke! So first let's go over the construction of the board. In 2011 I took my first trip to the Loaded office. I got to spend a couple weeks with them discussing new products and we filmed a video. During that time I found out that Loaded had planned on releasing a drop deck push board and their construction included a carbon fiber bottom and this really neat cork infused epoxy layer that they had been experimenting with. The whole point of this cork epoxy is to add a damping layer without having a board that feels kind of like soggy pasta. You may have had boards that over time become more damp and it's really nice, but they also aren't as precise. The carbon on the bottom allows the flex to remain more consistent throughout the life of the board, but when you have a more snappy, responsive, sprightly deck, it takes away from the damping. And as an answer to that, Loaded experimented with and I think did a pretty good job making this material. Now it's a fairly subtle effect, but it is noticeable to people that spend a lot of time on the road, including myself. And again, that like doesn't detract from the characteristics of the board. Now this is sort of a medium flex. I did find it really good for my weight. I weigh about 170 to 180 pounds, depending on how much muscle I have. Typically I carry about 20 pounds of camera gear and about five, six pounds of backpacking gear. I found the flex to be wonderful for me. I do think it's a sweet spot to kind of get the best spread for the most people from people heavier than me. There's quite a lot of range, both above and below my ride heights. And I really don't find much difference with or without a backpack, to be honest. 
It's really nice that the damping for, for the road vibrations are done through this top layer. The weight of the deck itself is very, very, very light. I find it pretty close to the weights of foam core boards, even though it's solid wood throughout, just because the board is so thin. There is a layer of triaxle fiberglass underneath the cork to help keep it together. Now, um, I've been a huge fan of the open nose and tail forever. I feel like aside from the drop Evo, I was the first person to really give this a go. And the reason why I love it is because you can drag your skateboard when you're exhausted in like little grocery stores in Peru, little tiendas, buy like the bolts on the front and you won't scrape the nose. You can have the board at a pretty high angle, so it's pretty ergonomic <laughs> when you're too tired to carry it, right? That was the main reason why we started doing it. Uh, the second reason was to save weight. Um, that's why I cut the tail off on my racing boards. Another thing that I really, really appreciate about the fork, nose, and tail is that you can install your trucks. You can take them on and off the board with, without having to take the trucks apart. I am like the slowest person at like taking my skateboard apart or building skateboards. But let's see how fast I can do this with the T-tool. All right. Uh, running out of time. Oh, that's not tight. That's not good. Final stretch. You gotta be careful not to drop them or my cat will try to eat them or something. Oh, it's rusty. <laughs> so fast. Okay. All right, come on. You're being ridiculous. Do I literally have to thread this last bolt out? <sighs> so obviously I need this to be as easy as possible because uh, I don't have all gosh dang day. So you can take your trucks off and put them on, tighten it up, ready to go. Always check your bolts, twice. Don't be like me and win races with like the wheels hand tightened <laughs> and move it around like a centimeter. <laughs> yeah, I'm that guy. So I'm gonna go put this down and forget that my trucks aren't installed. Specs. The deck is 33 and a quarter long. Standing platform. From the inside. Oh, I just dropped it on my foot. Mm. Inside of the drop to the inside of the drop. Keep in mind we have this beautiful crescent drop here. We're looking at, by my tape measure, what's usable, 21 and a third roughly for how it will feel under your foot. And then going from the outside where you will tuck your toes or possibly your heel, I'm goofy, toes, heel, 23 and a third. So 20, 21 and a third. So we get about an inch and honestly with the edge of the board as it is, you probably, you, you, you get about an inch where you can creep up beside the drop. The official length is listed at 33 and a quarter uh, or 84.5 centimeters, uh, which is exactly what I got. And I don't see what the standing platform is. I forget what it is. You'll have to watch the product video. There is a rocker. I don't like rocker on push boards, but this is so subtle that I didn't even realize it had a rocker. There's the tiniest waist taper. Again, you really have to look for it. Um, and I think that that's ideal. I kind of prefer it to be straight-ish, straight edge. Where I place my foot, sometimes I can feel the edge of the deck. I kind of like that reference. I like it to be consistent. So I prefer that. Um, I don't like a ton of rocker or camber, and this has a bit of both. And it's so subtle that I really didn't notice it. Uh, it may be a benefit. 
Uh, everyone seems to think so. <laughs> if I'm riding my goofy push and then I do a mongo and then I do a couple steps and turn myself around so that I am now riding regular stance, my switch, I don't get thrown off the way that I do with more aggressive cambers or more aggressive rockers, more importantly. I don't like having the heel raised. Um, the profile of the board, again, is not, it's not super gnarly, concave-wise. That's really good, because if you are the type of rider who likes to wear a higher stack running shoe with your board, then the rail won't throw you off. I have lost a race because I wore shoes that with too high of a heel mixed with a deck with a pretty high, pretty deep concave and it made me lose my balance like every kilometer roughly. <laughs> so uh, this is good, but it's still enough that it holds your feet. I can do slides and stuff with the board. I also use very minimal shoes, so I have a really nice board feel, uh, and I, that, that involves not having a very elevated heel. Pro tip, don't go with a super high stacked heel unless you're really trying to avoid an Achilles tendon injury that you're probably gonna get otherwise. Here's the ugly part, cons. What are they? What sucks? Gonna throw some shade. I do find the board a little short. I'm used to riding a larger board. I have a size 12 and a half foot. I imagine some people in that size 12 and above range might find it a little uncomfortable if they are the type that switch their feet. Honestly, it's really a good length. I do prefer my boards to be as short as possible when I'm doing this sort of thing. However, that short as possible takes into account a technique that I use where I like to flick the board and catch it with my hind foot so I can get into pushing faster. I find that that really helps when I'm trying to race up a hill very quickly. And I do consider myself a hill climber in the sport. So there's not really enough room for me to go perfectly toe to heel and fit in between the two drops. And so that is sort of my issue. Um, with my feet angled slightly like this, there's actually plenty of room, but that's not how I'm going to land. I flick and then my rear foot lands this way. So that way I maintain the same degree of internal rotation, rear leg to front leg, same degree of internal rotation. And so that's where I run into issues because my toe and my heel are about this, there's about this much overlap and I have to decide if I wanna put my toe on the drop or my heel will be right up here on the base plate. So that I find annoying. Now. Will this bother most people? No, most people aren't going to switch their feet at all. And those that do, or that wanna practice it, will be stepping, stepping, right? Then they will move their front foot a little bit more, place their back foot in the proper position. Most people won't even internally rotate as much as me, and then they can push. And uh, you know, it's a shuffle. And Jeff makes fun of me because he says I should just shuffle, however, I'm losing on a hill climb every time I switch. And that sucks because I'm trying to keep my pace up and it, it drops really fast. So that's really my only critique. I do feel that size 12 is where people will start to have trouble if they're doing some of those more advanced foot switching techniques. That said, I've ridden it for 10 months and I haven't fallen because of it. I have done the odd quick change and it was forgiving enough, it just felt a little weird. Uh, and mostly, like, the shuffle has worked fine and it will in 99 out of 100 situations, you don't need, there's no requirement for you to change your feet fast when you're pushing, because you can coast. It's a good time to get a little aerodynamic position going and coast. You know, you're a size 12 and above, I might recommend trying the board first, or seeing how it feels for you. A lot of people with bigger feet than me find this to be perfect. Now, now one other place where the length can be not ideal, along with the flex weight of the board, 
is if you're going like over 55 miles an hour <laughs> or like 80, you're like above 85 kilometers an hour. Um, the flex is fine in a straight line or on, on curves. Uh, it's a little less precise if you're trying to do really fast corners at that speed or if you're trying to do a quick check it might be a little more chattery than uh, a more precise, stiffer downhill board. However, that's a pretty nitpicky thing. And it's kind of not a fair critique considering that you don't want a downhill stiff board when you're pushing distance because it's punishing, especially if you're on rough pavement. This is bad! and you're going to encounter rough pavement at some point. Like I'm really, really grasping for negative critiques here. <laughs> I have gone pretty darn close to 60 miles per hour on this board. The flex didn't act up on me, but just, but I could still sense that it was there. Again, it's a push board. I don't think people are gonna be taking it all that fast. I think it's capable. I'm willing to skate this in the Himalayas if I end up going. Um, I'm really working hard to find critique, but in all honesty, that's what I got. Now, first, let me start by saying support your local shops, especially if you have big feet and wanna try the board out first. But if you don't have a local shop and you found this video genuinely useful, or you would like some way to help contribute to my video projects, like my upcoming mini series, you can do so by using my affiliate link. Gosh, I feel like such a YouTuber. Turn the lamp to purple. It's my lamp. It's now the official color of YouTube review videos. If you're already gonna buy the board, it's a good way to support my projects. Smash that like button and subscribe and then use my affiliate links so that I make $40 every three weeks. <laughs> Keep an eye open for my upcoming mini series where I skateboard through the Albertan Badlands on my trip skateboard. Looking for dinosaurs. Ah! Goodbyes are awkward.